direct the conveyance of the property located at 5800 Patterson Avenue to the Economic Development Authority of the city for nominal consideration of the purpose of the development of the property as an authority facility as defined by the Virginia Code upon certain terms and conditions. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Is there anyone here speaking in favor in opposition to this?
and consider the best uses for our neighborhood and its historical landmarks. Thank you very much. Look forward to working with you. Good evening, Madam President, members of Council. My name is Stuart Carver. I represent the Westview Civic Association. Uh, our boundaries include all of Maitland Avenue from Grove Avenue to Patterson, as well as the west side of Libby from Grove to Patterson and streets uh, off of both of those. Um, our board is concerned uh, over the lack of information and details regarding the impact on our wonderful neighborhood from the proposed 75,000 square foot medical office building at the West Hampton site. Um, due to the lack of detail, uh, our neighborhood really doesn't know what you're signing us up for. Uh, for example, what would be the impact on our neighborhood uh, with traffic? traffic congestion, traffic safety. What steps would be taken to mitigate these problems for our neighborhood? Uh, what additionally, what would the impact be on pedestrian safety, noise, crime, environmental impacts? How long will the construction project be? Our board would, would respectfully request that the decision to transfer this property be postponed until all the information regarding the many neighborhood impacts that will certainly occur is available, has been thoughtfully considered, and factored into the final council decision on the conveyance of this property. We do warmly welcome the Redskins for the three weeks of the year they'll be here, but we also know that we're going to live with the consequences of the decision on the conveyance of this property for those three weeks and the other 49 weeks of the year. It seems that it would be prudent and wise to not feel pressure to make this decision so quickly until after the consideration of all of the impacts for the entire project, including our neighborhood. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Good evening. I'm Robert Lynch. I'm a citizen of Richmond. I was born here. And I reckon if I'm cut, I'll probably just lead red. Uh, I like football. I happen to be enjoy watching the Redskins, and I know they have many great players like uh, R.G. and Iraq. Probably they don't have to trade them, um, but we're not getting the Redskins. We're getting a training camp, and that has its plus and minuses. And just like the lady said before, I think we need more time for the citizens to be able to get some input on the plus and minuses. Football teams come and go. I used to be a fan of the. Uh, all the helps, but they left the city. So I just would like to be sure that if we're giving people these long-term lease, we're giving them a long-term commitment too, and that the people of Richmond's interests are looked after. Not just the schools, they're important, not just business interests. The idea we hope any business brings more business. We hope this will bring more jobs. We don't know. We have to calculate. But I did say this, in general principle, I think it would be a good idea if those that can afford, that are in a profit-making enterprise, pay for their own structures. If I'm a carpenter, I'm expected to bring my own tools to the job. But constantly we hear about new stadiums being built with taxpayers' dollars, and special deals because this is a successful business that will bring in more opportunities. Well, let these successful businesses pay for themselves. That's the number one concern I have. This is a time of economic hardship. We need business, but we also need to hold a high standard and the same standard to the larger businesses that we have to the small. So my, our, my would say I'm not an expert. I'm not a skilled businessman like the people that are coming in with these proposals. But do not rush into a decision. Give the citizens time to figure out Consider the economic, consider the historical, and consider that Richmond has been here before the Redskins and will be here after the Redskins. It's a wonderful city, and it has many pluses, and it is a good place for professionals or non-professionals to live. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Council, thank you for listening to me again. My name is Michael Delano. I'm a citizen of the uh, Morgan Hill neighborhood. Uh, for one thing, I appreciate all the work, just like um, the have said uh, the council uh, put together. Uh, a couple of things that I have concerns about are, um, you know, I'm from Buffalo, New York, and uh, none of my political comments here will have anything to do with 
the Super Bowl loss uh, to the Redskins. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I will say that I do have personal experience with training camps. Uh, one of my friends in high school was impregnated at training camp. Uh, of the, uh, and so, okay, one of the guys that was training there uh, decided to get pregnant and then he's gone. So, um, that, uh, you can do a search for law and uh, NFL. I do think that there's lots of instances of NFL players that don't exactly bring. There's a lot of them that are good. And I like sports, I like silver. Uh, I play sports and I uh, appreciate sports. But I also don't think that cities should be held hostage. When I hear things like it's the best deal we can do, it's, and then the timeline that we're trying to get this done by, and the aspect that there's no criminal, uh, in, you know, sort of basis of looking at what happens to communities such as Chocolate Bottom. Guess where all these guys are going to go? Um, Fred Davis has just recently, this summer, been you know involved in the news about some allegations, and these things are affecting clubs. And we have a big problem down there already. So. The hostage situation that we have of cities, everybody wants to do well by our schools. I mean, I, you guys are doing a good job of trying to get as much as you can, but it's, it's, the fact is that we should have economic development from the people that have the money. The Redskins are the richest franchise in the NFL. Actually, if the city wanted to get their own NFL franchise, we would not be able to do it under the charter of the NFL because the Green Bay Packers are the only ones that are allowed that, and they decided that no other uh, city, municipality, can own an NFL franchise. So the NFL should invest on their own and leave the cities out of it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening, Madam President and members of council. My name is Glenn Sturdivant. Uh, thank you for letting us comment tonight. Uh, this deal affects me on a couple of different levels. On one, I, I live uh, just across the street from West Hampton School. And so this is going to be a significant change uh, to my neighborhood. And number two, as a new school board member elect, uh, the <clears throat> deal that is proposed for the school system uh, in this situation is uh, somewhat lacking. Uh, but first and foremost, I think the, the primary issue here that has concerned me is a lack of transparency. There's been a lot of levity here from the folks who have opposed Mr. Hilbert's paper and this paper. But I think we should not forget the fact that this is uh, something that's very important, that city government be transparent uh, and that the community be involved. We had a number of community meetings in my neighborhood where a lot of support representatives were present and we specifically asked what's happening with the West Hampton School. And just weeks before this deal was made public, we were told nothing was happening. Uh, second, uh, with respect to the schools, uh, Mr. Hilbert and, uh, and the council members who were involved in a, a wonderful job getting the best, very best deal that we could get under the circumstances. But the fact that this was not the most transparent situation, and the fact that it has been rushed, led to a situation of Mr. Hilbert over Thanksgiving weekend have to make a lot of phone calls and do a lot of negotiations to get what he was able to get. And that, I think, is part of the larger uh, challenge that we are facing here. Uh, so I respectfully request that, uh, as the city council, that we ensure that we are being transparent, that the brakes be put on this. Uh, not, not saying that we're going to say no to the Redskins, not say no to Bon Secours, but that we give sufficient time to make sure that we are, are doing this the right way. Thanks very much. Thank you, sir. Good luck, John. Good afternoon, Mr. O'Brien. I'm in an opposing line because I just really want to do the same thing you've always seen me come and do the, the process. And what we heard tonight was pertaining to the process and pertaining to transparency. But what we also saw tonight was, was that, as Mr. Tyler stated at the land use meeting, that they might not negotiate with city council the whole idea, but city council intervened in addressing the school issue in reference to the improvement. That's what the city wants. The administration and city council working together so that every thought process is there because we thought that the school was out. Another gentleman came down here as I was watching and addressed the other issue, jobs. If you have the leverage to be able to get another million dollars, and 
33, 20, another twenty thousand dollars per month for the lease, then I would want to believe that the city has still the leverage to mandate through Section 74, which is our procurement process, and through any procurement process that we use, the leverage that they want what we have. So with that, establish your contracts to make sure, not unconstitutional set aside, but what's by law, what's in the code, what's in the regulation. If you take the time to look at that, everything that you've always heard about is there. Well, we want to apply it. So I think that what has been stated today is, is that uh, the Catholic Church was brought in. Well, let's deal with that. Christ said, give us the season what it's season. This is what we have. This is our process. So if this is the process, then we need to know the process. And by knowing the process, we need to get educated on what we're getting involved in. Procurement is one of the most important things that has yet to be addressed in reference to city council, as well as administration, utilizing it to maximize what can come of helping the community. Now, that's where I'm at. I'm praying eventually that y'all will see that all roads lead to procurement. All roads lead to procurement because they have to come to you. And the Virginia Public Act 212 established that the implementation is from y'all. Y'all have the authority. Y'all designate the city, ECA, East Economic Community Club, and the housing authority. So, and gave you to follow what the city auditor stated. Remember his audit. It's issues with the discretionary powers and how things are being done. And all you heard tonight was lack of transparency behind closed doors. They your book, City J, what's going to be the next one? So I just came down here to engage y'all. If not for a procurement oversight commission, we need something to be able to establish a relationship that is definitely making sure that your people are also being involved in these business transactions that are being stated or done, being done behind closed doors. So I hope that you can support the procurement oversight commission. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, sir. Good evening, my name is Charles Evans Hughes, senior from Southside. And uh, that's 5800 block, Patterson Avenue. That's West Hampton School. You know, I went to an elementary school with Fort Ann. In its memories. I went to a high school and it's Fort down in its memories. And y'all don't realize it, but all you're going to have is memories, the thoughts in your mind. And here you're going to get rid of something that's older than all of us. It's not right. Classified as surplus? This area in here is surplus. Why don't we sell this? It doesn't make sense to take things, a few people, that want to take things from other people that it means something to them and to tear it down. Now you're talking about, oh, we'll just modify it. Well, they can gut the whole thing and just leave the outside shell and say, hey, this is West Hampton School. And then they'll hang some signs on the outside saying it's a hospital, emergency room or something. It is a shame of what we are doing. I have to put me in that because I'm a citizen of Richmond. But I don't go along with a lot of y'all of what you're doing. And the day will come it will come, just like three of y'all, us and hit three of you, the day will come that you'll answer for it. So let's think twice, maybe three times. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hughes. Good evening again. Good evening again. Um, I just want, first of all, I need to ask, is a resolution legally binding? We're off the resolution. I, I just asked, is it legally binding? No, it's not. Okay, thank you. That, I just wanted to get that up for the record. That's right. Can you state your name for the record? My uh, name for the record is Carolyn Worsom, W-O-R-S-S-A-M. Um, I just wanted to say that um, I, I'm speaking again against this whole deal. Um, it really stinks of crony capitalism and public-private partnerships, which are against the concept of free markets. This entity is going to call, I, I would request Ms. Robertson that she really look that up, public-private partnerships. 
Hey, you look, you're looking at me as if you're very puzzled and don't understand what I'm saying. But if you look it up, you, you will. Um, this endeavor is going to cost the citizens of Richmond tax money. It's going to we're going to end up paying for this endeavor in one way or another, and normally that ends up being increase in taxes. Um, our, we have a, our economy is not in the very best of shape. We are looking at increased taxes in 2013 as a result of Obamacare. Our governor and Senator uh, Watkins in, of Chesterfield has proposed a gasoline tax. Of course, that has to be voted on by the General Assembly, but that's another possible tax increase. People are losing their businesses are going, uh, they're closing. Employ employees are losing their jobs. I do not think this is the time to be considering bringing um, the Redskins to Richmond. Where's all this money coming from? I know that there were supposed to be some private partners. Who are they? Who are the private partners? How much are they donating? I just, uh, I just think this is a very bad deal for the citizens of Richmond. Thank you. Awesome. Is there anyone here to speak in favor? And in case anybody forgot what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.